Continental Tires is celebrating 75 years in South Africa. Over the decades, their tires have been fitted to some absolutely iconic cars. In this special sentimental series brought to you by Continental, we're going to be featuring some of those vehicles. And let's start with this, a beautiful example of an ultra rare BMW 2002 TII. One day, I remember in the mid 80s, um, there was a, a BMW dealership in the town that I grew up in. And a truck came through this little town and on the back of the truck was a 2002. And my dad pointed the car out to me and it was love at first sight. I'm Jacques Vessels and I drive a 1973 BMW 2002 TII. So I got my love for cars from my dad. And I come from a, a family that they were actually died in the war Mercedes-Benz fans. And, and he was kind of the, the rebel, decided to go with, with BMW. Um, and we had an E12 518 in this horrendous orange color. And I, I remember that um, back then I was always very embarrassed when he dropped me off at school because it had this very psychedelic uh, hue of, of orange. And I said to him, look, I never ever want a new car or a different car when, when I get to the age that I can drive. And we made a pact back then that my first car would be a 2002, uh, which it was. It's a very darty car because wherever you place it, it goes. You can feel the lightness. I mean, there's 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 no substitute for a for a light car. It's not a the most powerful of engines. I mean, you know, 1973, 130 brake horsepower is a lot, but still, you know, because the car is so light, it can keep up with modern traffic. Um, and but the, the the part that you can't compare is the fun factor. I mean, it's just uh, it's in a different league as far as that's concerned. You feel, you feel every bump in the road, and, and also the, the steering wheel really feels connected to the front wheels, and, and that to me is one of the most important things in, in any car. My wife's got a, an electric car, which is lovely, but the thing I miss most in that car is that it's as if the, 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 the steering's not connected to the front wheels. In this car, you know exactly where the car is, you know, you know where to place the car. I've had the car on the track as well, and it was a wonderful experience, and I think what is also nice about this, it, it's from the era where BMWs were quite tail happy, but you can control the car on the throttle, which is, which is so nice. So it's the, it's the driver that makes the difference. You don't need all the electric gizmos to keep the car on the road. Um, so if, if you make a mistake, it's, a, it's you, it's not the car. Um, but, but it rewards you. And, and, and the harder you drive the car, the more rewarding it is. The car was restored in 1995 by the previous owners and it's, it's done by a company in the UK called JMEC. They're very, very well known for restorations of the, the 2002s and then the, the, the 3 litre, the, the E9 in BMW speak. Um, so when I bought the car, I decided to have a little bit of work done to it um, before I brought the car back to South Africa and, and the idea was to um, get the people that restored the car to again you know just go over it and go through it and, and make sure that everything checks out and the company is up in in a, in a little place called Norfolk in in the north of England and um, you know coming from South Africa my expectation was it was going to be this amazing showroom and shop facility that you're going to walk into with all these shiny cars you know just ready for export 
And it was actually quite a shock to the system when I got there. And it was a wooden shed um, with like a, a one, one bay spray booth, um, lots of spare parts, lots of rusty 2002s standing outside all ready for restoration. But they did this amazing work. Um, and it was, it was an, an eye opener. It's a, a family owned business. Um, that have been passed on from generation to generation and um, you know if you look at the paintwork now this is close to it's 25 years old and it's and it's holding up very very well so the you know that old adage of not judging a book by its cover um, it's very true for for Jamie as well <laughs> feel as if a car is an extension of you. I think that's the bit that I enjoy the most. So the suspension is all upgraded. So it's got Eibach and Konies. If you drive them in standard format, I mean, they, they sit much higher. And uh, they're very comfortable. I mean, you, you won't believe how comfortable a standard 2002 is, but oh, they can be quite wallowy. And when the, you know, when you try and catch the rear, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a job and a half. My favorite drive with a car was uh, in, after I'd bought it in 2003, uh, there was a, an, an Ayrton Senna Festival at the Donington Raceway in the UK. And being a, a, a dyed in the wool Ayrton Senna fan myself, I couldn't think of a, a better way of giving the car a proper shakedown and a, and a baptism and taking it to, to the raceway and paying homage to uh, the great racing driver with a, with a great motor car. Yeah, I think, I think BMW should do a much better job of promoting their own racing pedigree because it is, I mean, I think second to Porsche, most probably one of the, 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 the very best. Um, yeah, these, these little cars, I mean, they called them the, the whispering bombs for a reason, um, because they, um, they punched above their weight. So the, the 2002 won the European Touring Car Championship in 69. And um, also rallies. Uh, I think in, in Germany they won the, the rally championship three years in a row. So they were very versatile, on-road, off-road, and a lot of privateers raced 2002s up until the, the, the mid-80s in actual fact because you could put some really fire-breathing motors in here. If, I mean, I think the one thing we need to consider is that the, the motor that we have in here, the base was used for the 1983 Brabham BMW Formula One car. Nelson Piquet, well in the lead, and Alain Prost in third place. Now, if they finish where they do, that would mean that uh, Nelson Piquet would be championed by only one point. And that was a 1500cc, same block as this, 1500cc, four-cylinder, turbocharged, and it's, it's still the most powerful Formula One engine ever. So in qualifying uh, trim, it put out 1,500 brake horsepower. So you can do a lot to these engines, and they are very reliable. So from a motorsport point of view, um, it's, it's an incredible base to work from. So we had two I had a 2002 Ti and my dad had the, just the bog standard 2002 um, and my dad passed in, in 94 unfortunately. Uh, during the course of the 90s we decided to sell both unfortunately but I made myself a promise that I would find another one um, and that I would buy it and my dream is always to get the Ti because it was a mechanical fuel injected car and um, in 1999 my company sent me to uh, the UK. And I was lucky enough, after like a four year search, I came across this one. Um, and I'm, I'm only the second owner. Used to be, uh, really belong to an, an old lady. I, I was just, I was standing there staring at it. Um, and then I immediately thought to myself, you better get storage for this vehicle because you cannot expose it to the elements for too long. Um, because in the UK, as you know, they use salt on the roads as well. But yeah, I was over the moon. And, and the next morning was even better because it's, it's kind of a, you know, a dream at the time. But uh, when you wake up the next day and, you know, you peek out your window and you see it standing there, man, it's a great feeling. Do you 
you like clothes, I do, this is available right now on our sentimental shop. Just go to Casa Cosa forward slash shop or look for the description in the link below. <laughs> See what I did there, just trying to catch you out. And we've got tons of exclusive merchandise which is designed and made exclusively for our store. I said exclusive twice because it's very exclusive. Also hats. Cars.coza.